Welcome back to the Bulletin. President Ikufuado has urged heads of Equus Commission to review certain trade policies which are likely to pose as obstacles to the smooth introduction of the original common currency. Now, some policies, including the common Equus Common External Tariff Regime, currently being implemented by the Commission, as well as other import and export related initiatives, are said to be major hindrances to ensuring that a common currency for the sub region is achieved. The president called for a review of the convergence criteria to ensure uniformity of trade practices. President Kufado made the call in his welcome address to the fifth meeting of the presidential tax force on the ECOWAS single currency program here in Accra. The implementation of the revised roadmap that will be adopted at our meeting. We need to ensure that the ECOWAS Commission is provided with the needed resources through the setup of the special fund for financing the activities of the revised roadmap. I call also on governments of our member states to take all measures to ensure that the macroeconomic convergence criteria, a prerequisite for the introduction of the single currency, is consistently met. This will invariably require marrying the convergence targets with our national macroeconomic targets. This is my hope, that as we shape the future of ECOWAS, we are positioning West African enterprises to compete effectively in the global space. There are many amongst us who cannot accept that it is only Asians who can engineer their transition from poverty to prosperity in a generation. We should be determined to emulate that in our generation in West Africa and ensure that succeeding generations will be neither victims nor pawns of the world order. We have a historic opportunity to create a new reality for the peoples of ECOWAS a reality of general prosperity and progress. Let us seize this opportunity. The Tourism Research and Advocacy Centre, TRAC, says despite the over 30 years of interventions to enhance tourism to make it a major vehicle for the country's economic transformation, there are still policy-related weaknesses and supply factors undermining the sector. This was part of the outcome of a survey conducted by the centre. Now, head of Department of the Tourism and Hospitality uh, at the University of Cape Coast, Professor Kweku Boache, is therefore calling on government to engage more tourism industry players to come up with the best solutions to challenges facing the sector. Charles Aite reports. The survey by the centre mentions defective policy regime, limited attraction offerings, poor supporting infrastructure and a weak operating environment as having culminated in stagnated growth in demand and also stifling performance of the sector. Head of the Department of Tourism and Hospitality at the Cape Coast University, Professor Kweku Butre, says government must engage more with industry players in the tourism sector so as to sustain its growth. And because we have not paid attention to the structural nature of these issues, they keep recurring, regardless of the form they manifest themselves. I liken it to putting a good seed in poisoned soil. You know, no matter what you do, you're going to get... Um, some difficulties in getting at least, at the very least, their desired yield. According to him, government may also want to consider opening up investment opportunities in the sector, as well as creating a suitable environment for local players in the hospitality sector thrive. Let's revisit the policy framework. Let's have a second look at the political economy, the operational structure, the institutional arrangements we have in place. When we have those set out properly, the rest will fall in line naturally. Meanwhile, Tourism Minister Catherine Afiku says her ministry is implementing policies that best favor both local and international investors. Speaking to Joy Business in an interview, the minister outlined some plans for the industry. A cabinet subcommittee that I'm a member of the social services uh, approved pending the main cabinet approval a legislative instrument that allows uh, my ministry to take over the tourist sites 
in conjunction with the district and municipal assemblies where the site is and the traditional rulers so we can retool rehabilitate and spruce it up to international standards we do it in number of tourists uh, last year we had 1.3 outsiders coming in and then internally we had 3.5 million people traveling back and forth within the 10 regions uh, we are projecting uh, 5 million we want to target 5 million tourists not just based on the cnn advertisement based on policies and strategies that we'll put in place the report by the tourism advocacy research center provides a general overview of the performance of the sector over the period in question by capturing and analyzing the performance of tourism sector over the last three decades. Government is making available 10 million Ghana cities to support female entrepreneurs. This falls in line with its aim at enhancing women empowerment. Minister for Business Development Ibrahim Mohamed Awal disclosed this at a women entrepreneurship conference in Accra. The 10 million cities fund, which is established under the supervision of the Ministry of Business Development, is to serve as a source of funding for women in entrepreneurship. According to statistics by the World Bank, only 47% of women have access to funding for their businesses. In this regard, President Ekufado, in his drive to boost national and economic development, has been pushing for women empowerment. Speaking at the Women Entrepreneurship Conference organized under the Business Development Ministry, the sector minister, Ibrahim Mohamed, Ahmed Awal and treated entrepreneurs to make the best out of the fund when it's finally rolled out. What government is instituting to support young women in entrepreneurship. We're working on the modalities, what we want to do. Most of the applications we've had from young entrepreneurs, they want support between 10, 000, some between 10,000 Ghana cities and 100,000 Ghana cities. We need to find a modality so that every region will have entrepreneurs benefiting. What we are doing is to assess the credit worthiness of all these people. That's why some of them might have. It's not free money, but the interest rate is not beyond 10%. The second lady of Ghana, Samira Baumia, lauded the initiative and called for more investment in women. The Ministry of Business Development, set up by President Nana Adodankwe Kufado in 2017, was created to promote the private sector and prioritize the needs of existing businesses and help facilitate the creation of new ones. I'm particularly pleased about this 10 million intervention for young women entrepreneurs. We have been, which we have been told by our minister earlier. Furthermore, the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Plan under the Ministry of Business Development and its private sector implementation partner, the African SME organization, is a laudable initiative that women in business with ideas that they need to grow, and those already in business should take advantage of. I see a lot of young women in this room, and I'm encouraged about the future of Ghanaian women. Some entrepreneurs share their view on the fund. To be honest, I'm quite hopeful about this one. We're really hoping they didn't give us too much information at this time because apparently they are still working on it. They need a couple of months to come out with the details as to how we can access it. So it's very encouraging for me to know that the government is thinking about me and they want to support me with something like this, provided that in there's going to be management and checks that this is going to be an effective system and it's actually going to happen. The model of disbursement and assistance from the fund will be made known after it's launched in April this year. Reporting for Joy Business, Karen Dwayne. But really, it isn't all in Well, we are turning tonight to some other story that is developing. The Supreme Court has, in a unanimous decision, upheld insurance firm SIC's appeal against Ivory Finance Company Limited uh, regarding a credit guarantee issued in favor of construction firm Ital Construct. Now, the highest court of the land made orders remitting the substantive matter of fraud to be heard on its merit by the High Court. Joining us on the phone with more on this is Managing Director of SIC, uh, Stephen Adro. Uh, thanks very much for your time tonight. Uh, before we talk about today's uh, development, kindly remind us of how we got here. Oh, uh, about five years ago, uh, yeah, there was a situation whereby SIC uh, granted credit to ITAL for some development. 
for some reason, due to non-performance, Ivory called up the phone. But without getting into the legal details, uh, the long and short of it is that the case ended up in court. Uh, as of today, SRC have paid 19.2 uh, million cities. Uh, but for some reason, <coughs> there was an interest that had, had been accrued. We ended up in Supreme Court. SRC wanted to present our case that we smell some uh, rat in there. When I say we, we smell some rat, we, 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 we thought there was some fraud perpetrated on the company. The case for today was to allow SIC to prove its case at the high court. So that is where we are as of today. And what was the ruling of the court today, essentially? Well, the ruling, in fact, outside uh, at the Supreme Court, the ruling was the appeals court case and the high court case had been set aside. The decisions have been set aside. That means SIC is going to present its case at the high court. And uh, what does this latest development mean for SIC and the case going forward, really? Well, uh, because of this particular case, uh, the image of SIC has suffered a little bit. Uh, some new clients were a little bit reluctant because they didn't know what is going to happen to the company. But as of today, you know, we want the whole world to know that SIC is here to stay and SIC is ready to serve. All right. Thanks very much for your time. I know you're on your way to Kumase. Thanks very much indeed. Stephen Odo is Managing Director of uh, SIC. Now, let's turn to some other news tonight. The Ghana National Association of Small Scale Miners is calling on government to immediately lift the ban on the activities to save its members from further financial misery. According to executives of the association, members have incurred over $500 million for the period of the ban. The association says it also views the ban as discriminatory to license small scale mining uh, since large scale mining companies are still allowed to operate. Addressing a press conference in Kumasi, General Secretary of the Association, Godwin Ama, wants government to lift the ban. It's with governments for close to a year now, and uh, we are not achieving any results. We all came together, we looked at the MMIP, that's the multilateral mining integrated projects, which uh, the Australian government supported. And uh, based on that, we know we'll be able to implement that, and then the mining in the, the small scale mining industry will be sanitized. Uh, cabinet has approved, and then the launch of the MMIP was supposed to take place on the 9th February 2018. But it, it, it has been cancelled, and we don't know why. Do you get it? Because we knew that that project is looking at the long term for the industry. And it's the first time that a document like that has been developed. And it is not an ad hoc approach or a short term base or uh, 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 the, the players, that's the actors in the mining industry, uh, were also consulted. So it will not misalign with the realities of the ground because the buying of the, the small scale miners are also part of the whole process. So if this thing has been cancelled and a government has supported it, Australian government has supported it, and we don't know what we are doing now, what is the clear direction of the industry? That's what we are asking. Because it's like close to a year, you don't know what is going on. But we, the small scale miners, we are licensed operators, we are entrepreneurs who have invested into our operations. We went through the legal process and we are seeing that government is infringing on our rights as miners to operate. Because both the small and the large scale operators, we are being regulated with the same mining law. And that's, that's why we are having this press engagement. Say that, uh, that is yes, because if we are all under the same mining law, 
And are we saying that it's every large scale operators that are doing the right thing? Do you get it? So the fact those who are not doing the right thing should be dealt with. Those who are doing the uh, 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 right thing should be allowed to do their work. Nobody has been given the license to go and operate on a river body. He said, no, no. And you see that our tax force from day one, we put our resources behind them to be able to free our, our water bodies from this uh, uh, suction dredges. Because if the water, the turbidity of the water is even high, it affects our production. Your recovery becomes very low. So from day one, we are against that. We are not polluting the water. So far, over 6,350 something dredges have been taken out by our tax force. Do you get it? And it's a cost of over 1 million Ghana cities. Although we were sitting, we are taxing our members that look, let's support government to, 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 to be able to win. And we should move away from war on illegal mining to management of illegal mining. Because it's a socioeconomic issue. If we are looking at it from the issue of uh, 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 war, 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 then it will be like most of the past. And those were the issues that the small scale miners have been highlighting today. You're still watching Business Live. We want to turn to the Joy Business Van because it's a Wednesday. Now, smoothies have become the choice beverage for many people these days because of its health benefits. And startup artist Sylvia Fafali Oru is capitalizing on that to sell Ghana's cocoa. We'll tell you how on this episode of the Joy Business Van. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to today's program. The whole of February, we've been taking a look at enterprises in the cocoa industry. We took you to the farm, we took you to a cocoa processing company, but here's someone who is doing something very interesting, spectacular with cocoa. I'm here with uh, Sylvia Fofali Oru. Yes, she's CEO of Sijo Lee. Sylvia Fofali Oru is a chemist by profession, but she makes beverages on the side. As a chemist, um, after my contract of my first job was terminated, um, I had to get something doing in order to survive. So I had to start doing um, Sobulu. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I started doing that while I was working at my last my last place of work, and so I thought I could continue with that since I was still searching searching for a job, and so that was how come Sijoli Palazzo's came about. That was in 2015, but the disappointment birthed a startup. The local beverage making business is really competitive, and business owners always have to be innovative. But is the smoothie beverage that is becoming increasingly popular these days? more people are turning to the thick food blend because of its health benefits. Well, I noticed that everybody was doing more of vegetables and fruit smoothies. So I'm like, okay, let me see what it's going to be like if I mix fruits with chocolates. And I realized that the results um, looked good, tasted good. And um, that is how come I started to experiment with chocolate and then fruit. Today, Fafa is making three of her cocoa recipes from dark chocolate, white chocolate, and chocolate pebbles. But what excites her is that she's adding value to one of Ghana's most important commodities. One thing uh, that fascinates me about cocoa is um, the, the good you get out of it. Cocoa is rich in fiber, is rich in antioxidants, and we need antioxidants in us because antioxidants take care of free radicals, and free radicals are what that causes cancer. So when we're taking a lot of chocolates, it's helping us in the long way, in the long run. So that is why I'm passionate about chocolates. I have my white chocolate, I have my dark chocolates, I like my milk chocolates. They are all very good, but one I'll highly recommend are dark chocolates because dark chocolates are, uh, are more cocoa solids, unlike milk chocolate and then white chocolates. Fafa has great plans for business, but her biggest challenge is finance. So where does she want to see her business in future? Oh my God, you don't want me to say. I'm actually envisioning Sijoli to be um, um, something, uh, something that is going to, um, how do I put it, it's pretty complex, but then I want to see Sijoli to be something people look up to, 
We're like, okay, I'm going to take a drink. We're like, okay, I want to go take a drink out in town. Okay, where do you want to go to? Oh, see, Julie. Oh, okay, you know, that kind. Yeah, that is how I see Julie. That involves me putting in a lot of work to make a good name behind it. Ready, Joe? Come over. All right. I took like a minute to prepare all of those. Yes, please. So that's, that's okay. So what we have here, we have uh, our peanuts mm -hmm. with cocoa, cocoa um, powder. We have um, strawberries with white chocolates. We have uh, banana with dark and milk chocolates. So which so one do you think I should try? I think you should try that with the strawberries and okay. white chocolates. So what are you going to take? I'm going to try peanuts. Mmm. Okay. Actually, very good. good. Very good. Thank you. Very, very this good. This tastes good too, as well. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you liked it. Great. Nice stuff. I know it takes just a minute to make these smoothies once you have the ingredients. Hi, welcome back to Business Life. Now, President Akufuado on Tuesday launched a 10-year cashew development plan with a promise to give the country's agricultural sector a further boost. Now, the production of cashew in Ghana is currently around 55,000 tons a year, and government is looking at harnessing this for its planting for export and rural development project. I want to give you just a bit of an insight into the cashew industry. Take a look at this infographic. Well, that was some insight into the cashew industry and the cashew development plan announced by the president on Tuesday. And well, for our interview of the day, the general secretary of the general agricultural workers, Nyongawe, Edward Caraway, says government should be committed to adding some value to uh, raw commodities before export instead of taking them outside the country in the raw state. Listen. Well, cashew today is mainly for export. And if you look at the global uh, train. Uh, the market is good for cashew, you know, but because it's a raw material, you cannot guarantee the market for long. You know, you don't know when the, there will be a glut in the world market. So finally, do you think there is any adverse consequences that the government should take a critical look at in the establishment of this particular plan, the cashew development plan? Well, it's not enough to just establish the, the farm and the plan and so on.
And that's our interview for the day. And before we leave, just to remind you that you can get up to date on all our stories on our website, myjoinline.com forward slash business. Uh, you have the latest stories making news in the world of business plus all our audios just in case you missed out on any of our bulletins. My name is Daryl Carl. Thanks for watching. We are back same time tomorrow.